This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. It's a goal! Johnson puts it in the air. Aiden Flynn wins the oh! It's the oh! It's still with Lee Gregory. He's in the box. Tries to screw him. Is it going to be there? Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Oh my word! Good evening and hello and welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Week. How are we all? Um, so I'm going to start off with this, everyone. Um, we are all aware of what happened towards the end of the game on Saturday. And we at the podcast condemn the unacceptable behaviour of a few morons and hope that the authorities and the club deal with these in a swift and decisive matter. There's no excuse for racism, ever. Guys, how are we? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, all good, good John? Everybody else. Yeah, all good, yeah. Yeah, cool. I think, you know, you move on to the next game. Check it off, like Taylor Swift saying. Check it off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we'd start off with a Taylor Swift thing, but yeah, good. <laughs> Stevie, how are we? Yeah, good, mate. Um, yeah, been a, been, a, been a heavy sort of weekend work-wise, um, beer-wise on Saturday. <laughs> um, yeah, and then... Monday, Monday soon comes round, doesn't it? But yeah, all good, all good. How about yourself? Uh, yes, mate, I'm I'm all right. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Simon, good. how are you? I'm okay, Ash. I'm not too bad. Um, yeah. Having to deal with the tantrums of mock exams with a 15 year old, <laughs> which I think you're going through the same. So I am indeed. Yeah. I'll, hey, I'll hey, just... hey, hey, hey! Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I've got a son. I've got a son. I've got 200 of them. Oh, get out. <laughs> get out. Uh, Zai, I'm going to say, you're looking lovely. That's a lovely jump you've got on there. It is, isn't it just? Isn't Where would it one lovely... want to purchase something like that? Well, I would imagine if you go on the socials, you'll be able to find on our podcast where you can buy <laughs> our tat. Thank can I just much. say it is nice and warm and cosy and my central heating's on. So if I pass out halfway through the podcast, <laughs> it's due to the fact that I'm too hot. No problem. Right, we'll get down to it. Coventry City. Come to Hillsborough on the back of, well, I think they were unbeaten in six. Um, three wins and a draw, and then two wins, I believe, something like that. Uh, in fine form, whereas Sheffield Wednesday just coming off a 4-0 loss at Southampton. Um, so I think the first talking point for me, and I don't know if you all agree, is obviously two o'clock, the team came out. And it, all those that are watching, I know on the medium of audio won't see this, but I'm just going to put up a graphic. Here we go. So, starting lineup was Beadle in goal, Johnson, Bernard in Equate and Valentin, Palmer and Volks in the mid middle, with Windass, Bannon and Gasama supporting Ashley Fletcher up front. So, I think the first question, guys, is um, Beadle over Dawson. John? Um, what did you think to that choice? Do you think it was going to be inevitable with Beadle coming in probably a bit too soon against Southampton, but obviously being being at the club a few days now? Yeah, well, I, I thought he'd get a get a shot sooner rather than later. And um, um, obviously, when you rip up a loan at one club to come to another, and the Premier League club is going to expect that he's going to get game time with us. Um, and we know that Dawson's had you know some some moments there and. Uh, so not totally shocked. Um, I think in an ideal world, if he wasn't cup tied, he maybe would have saved him for the cup game. But obviously, <laughs> I believe he's cup tied. One of the gang was saying he was cup tied. Yeah. So rules having a look at this uh, this fixture, and he's put he's decided to to put Beadle in. Um, he's a lot taller than I thought. I know he was listed, but I think you know because of his frame, he's quite lanky, isn't he? He's quite a, so it makes him look even taller. So. He, I was saying, uh, saying to you guys before um, on the chat, he, he, he reminds me a bit of Nick Pope in his stature and the way he moves and that. And um, obviously, if he turns out half as good as Pope, we'll be laughing, won't we? But um, <laughs> yeah, coming in for Dawson. So yeah, giving the young lad a try and uh, not not a massive surprise. I think that I think the writing has been on the wall for Cam for a little while now. It's not been no secret we've been looking for another keeper. Yeah. Uh, and so Beadle, 
Bill got his chance, and uh, yeah, um, I thought, yeah, I thought it didn't really surprise me that he that he came in. Stevie, you see number one on the team sheet. What, what were your thoughts on Beadle um, getting the the nod? Um, I'm not a I'm not a massive defender of Cameron Dawson. I'm I'm, I'm not as big a critic as, as certain other people. <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast, especially on uh, this podcast, yes, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the big boss is not around, is he? So um, while he's on the other side of the world, um, we can we can sort of bemoan that fact that he he, he talks a little bit about Cam. Um, I I, he, I, don't, I didn't necessarily, and I, I've said this before this season. I didn't nece- necessarily see goalkeeper as being the biggest issue in our team. I don't think it is. Um, I, I, I like the bits that I'd heard about Beadle. Um, and I was I was interested to see what he'd be what he'd be like, um, but yeah, um, no surprise. We brought him in for a reason. He's been recalled by Brighton, um, obviously. To, to there must have been something going on in terms of getting back so we can get him out at a higher level. Whether that was preempted by Sheffield Wednesday's interest, um, or that was just something that they were looking to do to get him playing in the Championship based on the first three months of or four months of this season. Um, only they can answer that. But from from my perspective, my point of view, if we if we brought in another lone goalkeeper on top of the lone goalkeeper that we already had, um, he we're going to look at him at some point, aren't we? Um, so yeah, from a from a starting lineup point of view, I, it, it wasn't a major surprise. I actually thought, and I don't know whether he's cup tied or not. Somebody else can can sort and, and, and sort of tell me. Um, I expected him to play Friday if he weren't cup tied. He didn't play in the last round, I don't believe. Um, evening, Daniel. By the way, I'm just looking at the comments. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dan's had waiting already. It might be however many five, fifteen thousand miles away, whatever it is. But he's, he's, <laughs> I bet it's about one in the morning as well. He's we're still coming. Uh, no. <laughs> You'll be in an Irish bar somewhere on the other side of the world. <laughs> Simon, um, I mean, just for come to you. Now, I think Dawson's done a good job, but needed improvement in that area. So. I think it is one of the areas that people have shouted about. Yeah. Uh, for you, Simon, coming in? I think it was a no-brainer. I allude to what John said. You know, Brighton Premiership side aren't going to loan as a keeper to sit on the bench and warm the bench, are they? So, Vasquez hadn't featured since Cisco's era. I don't think he played under rule at all. Um, so... Any, was it any, was it West West Brom away? I can remember West. I can remember going to West Brom, and that were abject. And I don't know if that was the the final straw for Chisco, but I think that was the last yeah. game. It was a midweek game. I might be wrong. It, it was certainly wasn't favoured, was he? You know, and 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 even to the point of the the warming up and half time, he sort of was looked a very lonely soul. So the the guy coming in from a Premiership side was only ever going to end up in one thing. He was going to end up taking taking the shirt. And Dawson's come under some criticism recently, you know, some great penalty saves. But then you look at the one of the goals at Norwich, um, the other goals we've conceded. I'm trying to think back now, really, where I think it was Cardiff, wasn't it, at home? And I think sort of that put some nails in the coffin, so to speak. Yeah, I think some of his yeah. positional players being brought in, being questioned as well, hasn't it? It's from, well, from set pieces and stuff. So. Yeah, well, the, the, the managers obviously had a look at it, didn't fancy Vasquez, um, brought in somebody and, and he's, he's brought him in. So he started. Um, the the only other thing from probably is, is Ashley Fletcher starting up front. Don't get me wrong, Kadamatri is coming and he's done well, uh, but he's played probably an awful lot of football for it. I know it's a youngster, isn't it? But, you know, and probably took him out of the... Uh, um, firing line for a game. So for me, I mean, what what overall of the starting lineup? I mean, it was strong. I, I was quite impressed with it. Um, we've seen Palmer in the midfield for a, a couple of games, so that's not uh, out of the blue. Um, probably Diaby being dropped, which he was dropped. I, um, I think he was called for a few. So yeah, overall, just a quick overall thoughts on on your starting lineup, guys. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't surprised that Bambo had uh, was dropped. To be honest, a couple of cock ups, I suppose, at um, Southampton. Um, Palmer again keeping his side, his position in in the side, but it does then question where's George, George Byers fits in. Um, and I, I, sp- I suppose with Momo, it's just a case of his fitness and match fitness coming back. 
in regards to him not being played. Um, but yeah, definitely. I, 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 and, and Volks, I, th- I think he earned a, a starting um, in the starting eleven after his when he came on against Southampton last week. Yeah, yeah I must yeah. admit, I'm, um, Bambo. Um, it doesn't make me nervous when we play him and he's, and he's trying to pass the ball around in in the system that we that we play. He's, to me, he's more of a no nonsense defender. And he should be, you know, be asking to be get, you know, get rid of the ball where, where he can. But when we play out from the back, and and in particular when Bambo is on the ball, he, he does he does give me give me give me kittens at times. He really does. So, uh, you know, if we're going to play the, I prefer my preferred back two. If you're going to play in that system, back four, or whatever, then um, would be a Heckway partnering D- Dishon. Big Dish is the number one for me, and then. You can stick either for me or, or um, a Heckway side of him, and I'm happy. But the RB will have a part to play, and I'm sure he's just in a bit of a, a lull at the minute. But he does he does worry me sometimes when we the way we try and play out from the back when uh, when he's on the ball. So I'm not surprised he got dropped for this one. Yeah, Stevie, Bob, those those attacking intentions though. Obviously, on the on the graphic that I put up, it did show three behind Fletcher. Um, for for a team that have come in, in commentary who've been playing well, who are unbeaten, it was pretty pretty bold of rule to go that way. I think, do you? Um, yeah. Well, you, you were on, um, and, I, and I actually enjoyed. And this isn't just a, a me blowing smoke up your ass. I, I actually really enjoyed the the hello from the other side last week, and I thought their fellow, forgive me, I, I can't remember his name. I thought he, I thought you spoke really yeah. well, and. Um, well, I'd, I'd, I'd well, gone into it. thousand people liked it as well, Steve. So you know, two and a half thousand. You say yeah. that's yeah, so, well, that's not bad, is it? That's some numbers, right. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'd gone into the. I sort of woke up last week, going, "It's Coventry next week." We'd we'd done all right against Hull, um, and our home form has been good. You know, it's been the foundation. Let's be right; it's been the foundation of our current sort of upsurging or upturning fortunes. Um, and we've said, and I've said. The, you know, for me, if we're going to get out of the the, the relegation zone and, and start climbing the table, I'm not overly concerned about what happens away. It's it's our home form that's most important. Um, I um, I think personally, the way that we set up with Fletcher, and this this goes back to your original point. I think when we set up, Danny Rule has set up to say this is how we're going to play. This is what we're going to do. This is my philosophy at home. This is, you know, this is my backyard. This is where we're going to put, this is what we're going to do. Um, I don't think Fletcher, and I think Rule has got this, and one of the reasons that I've kind of warmed or I'm warmer to Fletcher than I have been over um, the first half of the season is I don't expect him to score. And what I mean, you know, he's the pivot around which Gasama, Masaba, Windass, those players behind him, get their good good fortune and I think he's just the person that's going to be a target man um people are going to feed off his scraps the knockdowns we've had a lot of success in terms of goals whether they be equalizers whether they be winning goals later on um he's been in and around a lot hasn't he and I think that's because he he, he runs rule clearly likes his data um his numbers are good in terms of you know um the the, the yardage that he puts in and the the the, the xg and all of that nonsense um so yeah he's he's he, he is what he is but he's not a goal scorer he's the guy the guy that's the the kind of player that's going to bring other people into play um so from 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 my point of view from an attacking perspective um i don't really have a worry about fletcher playing at the minute because i think we put a lot on Kadamatri as well and let's be right he's only 18 years old um he's not going to score 10 15 goals this season but if he can contribute with another half a dozen in the second half of the season that's an outstanding first return for a, for a young lad so we 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 are dealing with what we've got and yeah let's be right he's he's all right well we'll we'll go to the comments and i think he's contributed more than he usually does when he's hosting here <laughs> <laughs> get him get him off get him off <laughs> Uh, Dan, Dan Port Fletcher has been better under rule, playing with his back to goal, hold up play. It's better use of him. He just needs another string to his bow instead of being. The hey, he, um, he sent he sent that text as he was bungee jumping off a bridge you know, just outside <laughs> yeah. of Auckland, I believe. Yeah, well, so he, so. he weren't thinking straight. He weren't thinking straight. So I mean, we'll we'll get into the game. We'll get into. It. We've done the starting lineups and everything. Um, Simon, what were your thoughts? Obviously, three o'clock rolling on. We've seen the team and everything. So first, I mean, we lost two 0 didn't we on Boxing Day? 
at Coventry. So I think they, the fans and them had a bit of, I was going to say arrogance, but they did seem like it was a foregone conclusion. Um, I, so I, think? I think, I think Coventry are up there with Southampton as one of the best teams we've played this season. Um, I thought away, um, they've got a really good style of play. They don't have any fear. Um, they attack. Um, they attack with pace, with speed. Uh, the forty-five in in the centre is he, he he closes people down. Um, he, 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 uh, so to be honest, I mean, I've got a little bit of sort of personal thing with Coventry is because my other half is from Coventry, and despite all my in-laws. Um, liking rugby rather than football, they always remind me when Coventry um, beat us. And it hasn't been a lot over the last few years because they have been in the doldrums. Um, but Mark Robbins has put a really good team together. Um, and so I was actually fearing the worst. I thought it'd be a really d difficult game. I thought we were better than Boxing Day. But again, quality showed through. Um, the Japanese lad on one wing... Um, the the Nakamoto, I think, the yeah, the the guy who looks a little bit like Grealish with the short shin pads. I think you Grealish called him Wish. Grealish from Wish. You called him on the. I you know. He, um, the, the, <laughs> they, hair. they, yeah. they, they're a good side, and and we've got to we've got to remember that they are a very good side. I think they've gone quite a few games unbeaten. They drew with Leeds. I think they've drawn with Southampton. And then, obviously, last week in the M69 derby, they beat right. Leicester, who had been walking away from this league. All right, Leicester were down to 10 men. But that's a massive boost for a team, which is considered to be their derby, to beat a team that were Premier League champions, you know, a few years ago. It, it, it's So, to be honest... Yeah. Oh, you took yourself have... out of it already, haven't you? Yeah, I didn't expect yeah. us to win. I didn't expect us to win. <laughs> Um, I really did, and I'm, I'm, I, I thought it was going to be a really tough game, especially because we only played them, what, three weeks ago? Mm. Yeah, of course. Uh, Stevie, what, what were your uh, initial thoughts? We're going, like, we'll first, first, shall we say, first half? I know we went I, in. Yeah, I thought I, th I thought we started really well. Um, I do. I think we had the, the lion's share of possession in the first five, ten minutes, and I thought we put them on the back foot. Um and you know we we you can see we'd set up the plan um and we'd we'd, we'd gone into attack uh, i think we've covered the fact that they're a very good side and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll unpick that and dissect it a little bit but I, I, as i said i thought we started well on the front foot um and we've identified a couple of their players there that i think you know if you if you if you look at matching our up against them you know, we're, we're, we're competing these levels to this game in the championship and we're comp competing with, with some very, very, very good players. Um, what what can we say? Um, the possession, the, uh, the, the the shots, the attacking sort of the, the, the attacking stats across the first half indicated that they were better first half than they were second, even though we'd started better. So for, for me, um, I thought it was a good game. For the first 15, 20 minutes, and you know, we we, we had a couple of half chances. Gasana snatched at a couple. Um, Windass going down. It was interesting actually that they turned us round, didn't they? Yes. And I, I, yeah. I, I lent I lent to my sister at three o'clock as they were doing the um, the walk round, and I said the last team to turn us round were Peterborough. So there was a momentary mo uh, sort of thing in my head that was like, right, they've, <laughs> they've done this here, and we're on it here. Um, but yeah. Um, they're a good side. We 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 started well. We had a couple of opportunities. I got frustrated by Windass, if I'm honest. I think there were a couple of times where um, he hadn't done the things that you know for for a player with his sort of stature and the rumours around him being courted by certain other clubs and and what have you. Um, I'd have expected a little bit more from him um, first half. But do you, Steve, do you feel when we put him out on the wing, he sort of gets a little bit of the monk on? That he doesn't like playing on that position, so he sort of sulks a little bit. You know, I think he likes that playing in that disposable number ten cam role more than anything. And and he does. He just come across to me that he didn't really want to play in that position. He sort of. Um, my 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 response to that is uh, two things to say there. I think first and foremost, if if I am Josh Windass. 
and I'm not, obviously. Um, and I want to go and play in that central role, that 10 behind a, a striker maybe, rather than being out wide, then I'm, I'm going to go and earn it. I've got to go and earn the right to go and play in that position. And if we're looking to play our strongest players and, and get the right 11 out there, um, if he was the right person to play behind um, Fletcher as it was on Saturday, then he'd be in there. Um, I'd also argue that if you are expected to play out wide in that formation and that position, um, the manager that we've got and the, the coaching setup that we've got um, would be would be able to sort of say to him, right, this is what I want from you. Um, and he's played very well out, out wide previously. Um, there were just one or two bits. I think that, that, that didn't work for him. I think the we've alluded to this in the past before. He's, he's got a, a certain type of body language, a certain type of demeanour that makes him look like he's sulking when he might not actually be sulking. And that's just a personality thing for him. So only he knows if he's got the arse on. Um, we used to, people used to look at, I said this a couple of weeks ago, people used to look at Waddle and go, oh, yeah, he, he looks lazy, yeah, he looks yeah. lethargic. Um, I'm not saying he's Waddle, I'm saying, but I'm saying <laughs> people, people make certain judgments, don't they? Yeah. I, I was going to, that was the point I was going to say, Stevie. I think um, um, Tom, uh, TW, you know, the stats guy, sorry, mate, I yeah. forget. He, he put something out, I think it was last week, about the exact thing with Windass's stats. Uh, he's in, massive into his, obviously, his stats and everything. And, and he says he comes across as, as being lazy, but far from it. If you actually dig down into his, 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 into his data, he's probably one of the most, um, what's the word, active active members yeah. of the squad so and it, it, that's coming from obviously me as an idiot doesn't don't look down into data <laughs> as much as that and stuff so i'll take it i'll take him just just one thing for on uh, we've had glenn glenn from the sky blue hub coventry uh, hey thanks for coming on and uh, watching us talk about chef wednesday cov side on saturday that had five players starting played in the final for us i think wednesday will stay up if you recruit a few more bodies in uh, and that last yeah. few words there, a few more recruit, a few more bodies. We will talk about <laughs> later in the show. Um, can I can I, can I can I use that point as a platform? Sorry to um, yeah, of course. talk over you. Um, I have to say this, and it it pains. Wait, well, don't pain me to say it because it is what it is, and somebody has to do it. Um, Coventry brought their fan their fan base were absolutely outstanding on Saturday. Um, yeah, you know they yep. they've, they've we sold. We don't mind they've, giving props on this show, do we? Listen, they oh, no. they they've they've sold out and they've turned up and they made a racket from two fifty five till what, five o'clock, quarter past and, five. Uh, and that's the fan base. We think we have had it bad, but that is a fan base who have I been through it. the ringer over the last five ten years. I think the only the only, the, quiet, the only quiet section was when we scored, and I think yes. there was the arse twitching of. Actually, they could get one, and so I think they did go a bit quiet. But after we actually didn't create much more after that one goal, then I think they're a bit clever. But uh, we'll move on. They went one nil up. What What did you think to the goal? I mean, I've got my thoughts on it, and one member of this podcast <laughs> probably won't like them, my thoughts on it. But <laughs> Simon, we'll start with you. I mean, Chief, good finish. Not bad, was it? Ah, it was a good finish. <laughs> yeah, but how many times have we conceded goals from that part of the area over the last over this season? Because we haven't cut the ball out, and um, maybe if a certain player has stayed on his feet, then that person, then Sheaf, wouldn't have got that shot in. I mean, there's nothing the keeper could do um, at all. I mean, it was a great, great shot, but. Um, <sighs> It does frustrate me. We we spoke about this before, haven't we? About the team um, players, it, you know, defense starts really from the striker all the way back to the defend defenders, doesn't it? And you just felt, you know, I haven't actually mentioned the man's name. So Ben Ben's just put <clears throat> Bannon slander. Um, <laughs> I haven't actually mentioned his name, but if he stood up, not slid in. Did his characteristic oh, sliding tackle on the did, outside of the area, then probably would, they wouldn't have scored. But we were oh. on the back foot, weren't we? They were under we're under the cosh at that moment in time. So blasphemy, brilliant. <laughs> um, I, mean, I just think if you haven't seen, um, I think it's the ITV highlights package on TikTok. Um, Glenn as as Bannon sent for a hot dog because <laughs> they showed the goal and then played the, the Mickey Mouse hot dog song 
Uh, if you've got small children, you'd have heard it years ago. Um, and they played that book. Thanks, that, Glenn. Thanks a lot. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was a great finish. Um, I think a, a minute before that that opportunity, I think, was the, the bit where um, I, my issue was. So there was a, a player, the ball came into the area and there was a player that had his back, his front, his front to goal and he was shepherding the ball back for the keeper to come with about 10 Cov players around him. And then he had to hastily hook it away straight to their player who then played it into Sheaf, who obviously then we know the rest. Um, so I think that was the issue. Um, and but I, for that player, I have got more than that issue with him. We'll get onto that in a bit. Um but yeah, it was a great finish. Uh, John, yeah, I'm just one of these. I saw a bit of negativity for Beadle saying he wasn't tall enough to get that ball. <laughs> just, that's just someone tweeting for the sake of tweeting, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy. I mean, the guy's six foot three and looks about six foot nine. I mean, <laughs> like that shot was like proper postage yeah. stamp, weren't it? Top corner. No keeper saving that. I, I, I think the guy just, it was a great, I, I, I say, look, we, we're going to win, we're going to lose, we're going to lose to some shite goals, we're going to lose to some worldies, and sometimes you just got to say it, it was a great goal. It was yeah, a great absolutely. goal. Um, it, it was. It was it, it, Steve, done, go on. sorry, John, go on, sorry. That's okay. Steve no, agrees sorry. with uh, you, Simon, in not staying on his feet, Barry Bannon. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, the thing is, though, he slides in, he blocks the ball. It's a, it's a, start singing his name, clapping, and all that, isn't it? So, I think, I think more than for me, and, and I'm not the biggest Bannon fan, of course, but for me, it's more Sheaf than anybody else. That goal, I've got to say. Um, but there we are. Our, so, our, our talismanic midfielder has gone to make a challenge that if he doesn't make that challenge and something comes from it, he's going to get derided for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And what, 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 when, when you're on a podcast and what the things that we do uh, when we talk about it, and I'm not just talking about us, I'm talking about us as a fan base, we'll, we'll sit and we'll, we'll unpick bits and we'll, we'll, we'll say this should have happened and that should have happened. But we're, when we're, we're not pro footballers and we're not in that situation. And these, we, we do respect, we've all played at a level at some point, whether that be kicking a ball about on a yard or, you know, playing to a reasonable standard. Um, we can't, we, we sit here with opinions, but at the end of the day, Bannon made a choice and I won't criticise him for that choice. It, you know, people yeah. will say, you've got to, you've got to stay on your feet. If he stays on his feet and the, the other lad, I just think, if I'm honest with you, I think if he stays on his feet, I think she's got another trip and I think he does something else. And I just think he is at this moment in time on, on Saturday, he was a better player. And I just think he'd, he'd have had something else. And there were, there were flashes. Um, I don't know whether we'll talk about it. There, there, there was one phase of play where Palmer, Casey Palmer, has uh, back heeled the ball in their area in the first yeah. half, and I've just gone. Mm. They've, at, yeah. they, at that point, you're sitting there going, "Geez, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're tearing us apart here." And Coventry were just better than us on Saturday. The, 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 the time to... on the ball. Sorry, sorry, uh, Ash. No, you're all right. We, we, we just didn't have time on the ball, and, and Casey Palmer is one in point. I mean, in the first half. I'm not quite sure what position he, I think he was playing all all ten positions because whoever had the ball, whether it be Windass on one side or Gasama on the other, he was down their throat straight away. And I remember I remember saying to Aid who sits next to me, he said, That's one hell of a player. And his number always sticks in my mind, 45, obviously with Forestieri. And and I just thought he is a class act. And any in the first half, he he ran midfield and and it 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 showed on the pitch, didn't it? Well, I'm glad you said that because that this is it's come to one of my big bears of this this game. Uh, it was the midfield, um, and for me, Bannon, I don't think he had his great game. I thought he went thing, but I'm sorry, Stevie, but Palmer should never play midfield again, mate. The guy was oh. oh this this is hurting me as much as you. I, I can see the cracks appearing in that big big heart of yours. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Let me put this one up. <laughs> so Ben said to so anybody who's not listening, watching this, Ben, me and Stevie knows what's coming. That, that makes <laughs> see, see, Ben. That makes it even better because you know 
it, deep down in your soul, you know what's coming. It's not like Danny was going to come out with some outlandish Oxford penalty type statement. <laughs> you, you knew. Yeah, uh, I'm so, I do. Right, I'll start. The two games in midfield he played, he played really well. The final, he played well. But when you come across, when you, I, I need, I would meant to get the games who we played in midfield against, but the midfield for Coventry, the the uh, the Volks, Bannon, uh, slightly forward and, and Palmer in midfield, I thought Volks had a really good game, I really did, and I was I was shamed to see him hooked, um, rather than um, Palmer or Bannon later on. Obviously, both uh, came off. Uh, um, Palmer came off, sorry, but. Palmer, it, it was. It wasn't his game, and and I think that midfield um, just totally was non-existent. It was just one of the one of the bits. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. It's not 100 percent because Coventry, fair props to them, really good. Uh, it was just Palmer. He was just pedestrian. He made. I tell you what. He made a cracking tackle two minutes in against O'Hare. Absolutely made him made him know he was there. And I think that's where he was. He was following him around. He was trying to. But but obviously he's, he is different different class O'Hare and. Uh, for me, Palmer had a real off day, um, but but then again, no, it's all right picking one person, one player out. But there was others as well that didn't really like. I said Windass should have scored. It was like they, um, I think um, Paul Valentin didn't have his best game, which I don't think he's ever going to have his best game, is he? Um, so come at me, go on, Steve, stick up. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? I kind of, I kind of do want to stick up for him and defend him. And the reason that I want to is because whether I agree with you or not, and it becomes a bit of a thing, you're always going to stick up for your boy, aren't you? Um, the, the, and I, I just feel I, I need a boy. I need to pick a player and just. <laughs> I think, I think, I think. I tell you what, that's for something next season. You know, you sponsor players. I think next season. We're all going to allocate a player, and it doesn't no matter how shit they are and how oh, bad God. they are. You've got to stick those big rose tinted specs on, and you've got to do what Steve has done for the last four years or whatever it is he's been on. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not having that. This guy. I'm not having Hendrick, Ben. You can go. Can't defend the undefendable. <laughs> um, I, I, do you know what? In in all seriousness, I understand what people have said about Palmer on Saturday, I also would temper that with an, a, a counter-argument. And I know that I'm going to say this and I'm going to get absolutely ripped for it. I think a lot of that comes from legacy Palmer issues, legacy Palmer negativity and legacy Palmer criticisms. Um, I don't necessarily think, and there's going to be somebody that's going to argue against me. I thought, I thought Volks was very good. Um, on on Saturday, and I was surprised to see Volks be dragged as early as he was, rather than Palmer. Um, and I can only assume that that's something to do with sharpness, match fitness, game management, or player game management, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would I'd counter it and say if, if if everybody's saying Palmer's that bad, you tell me who played miles better than him, because I don't think many people did. Um, I, I, I think there was probably ten percent between our entire team on Saturday. Um, if anybody can say, tell me there was a standout player that was that was miles better than Palmer, oh, tell me. I said he was on. Uh, the box was better. Johnson was good. Yeah. I actually but, thought Balancing. I know you you've alluded to it's like him. See, this is. I actually yeah. thought, and on and on the I think on the WhatsApp group, I actually thought Balancing had a better game than he's had for a long time. Um. So, but I thought Johnson for me, Johnson was our standout player. I, I, I can't argue. I'm not saying Liam Palmer was man of the match, but I'm saying we're, what we're doing here is we're saying, right, yeah, he was awful. You've just, was, uh, I, you've just said, and I, I, you know me, I love you to bits, mate, and I'm not going to argue with you. Um, not over this anyway. But um, I, I, if you, I, I think he's been given quite harsh criticism. I'm not saying he was good. What I am saying is that there are people here that are saying, get after, let's get after Palmer because he, he was poor and he should never play in midfield again and this, that and the other. He weren't great. I didn't think personally that Paul Valentin was great on Saturday. I thought he was um, he was quite anonymous at times. I didn't think Windass, there were patches where Windass didn't play particularly well. Um, 
I'm, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is what it is. You're, you're right. But I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. We can see it. I mean, we're, we're getting. I can't keep up with all these comments in it. Eh? <laughs> if we do watch us. <laughs> we definitely missed more, I mean, more I think, didn't we? I think, I think we can all agree on that. I think the yeah. question mark the question mark is, as I said at the start, is the fact that Palmer came into the midfield when our midfield had been decimated through injuries and so yeah. on and so forth, and that you know Byers got sent off, um, Volk's hamstring, uh, and at one point, you know, the the we were pulling players out, and Palmer was the one to come in in that defensive role. So the the thing is now is I thought the cracks were starting to show against Southampton in a way. Um, but to then not pick Byers again, and he didn't even come on as a sub, did he? And um, not pick Momo, who who I do think in the games he's played has actually looked. I thought that the midfield cried was crying out for him actually on on uh, Saturday. That sort of breaking the play up, getting the ball, and the fact that he can take the ball with him, yeah. and 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 what we we the outlet of Windass and Kasama was let down by the fact that we didn't have a midfield to provide him that ball. Yeah, well, Worko has put it, our midfield's a bit of void at the moment for me. A lot of teams uh, pile of pressure up the middle and we seem to crumble. Um, I just think we're missing we're missing something, aren't we? Uh, I, I look at other midfields. I, I look at Southampton's midfield um, and I think there was a comment, I don't know if you've shown it earlier on, uh, from the Cov lad. There you go. Um, Look, I can't yeah. argue with that. Yeah, no, I, 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 the, for the, the, the Glenn from Sky Blue Hovers said our midfield is full of quality, legs and work rate. Chef Wednesday, just like that bit of energy and quality in midfield. Um, I think I, it, it's energy slash fitness. I think Coventry were just sharper, fitter at it. Um, and you know, we, we, we we're a bit patchwork at times. Um, I, I can't disagree that Momo is is going to be an outstanding player in the second half of the season, but I'd also argue that I don't think he's been left out for anything other than he's not quite ready to play at that yeah. sort of level. Got to, um, got and to if, if the game, there. if this game were played in a month's time, Momo Diaby would be in there. Um, I'm not saying that he'd have changed the game and he'd have changed the outcome because I think 11 versus 11, you know, how many of the, on Saturday, how many of our players would have gotten the best 11 on that game? Yeah. Not not yeah. too many, you know. What I mean, oh, they were just better yeah. than us. Yeah, I think we are. Um, Sorry, John. We, no, I'm just. I, th I think it's an area where we're, we're actually conscious of trying to improve. And you know, we, we, we've you know we've we've tried a couple of things, haven't we? We we, we brought Buckley and didn't we? Thinking he might be able to give us a spark, and that hadn't quite worked out. Obviously, we went for Hendrick on loan as well from Newcastle, and that's not really worked out. So. I think that we're obviously aware of that. We are lacking a little bit of a spark in midfield and we're trying to address it. Hopefully we're doing this in this transfer window. But uh, yeah, it, it gets exposed against the good teams. We've seen it against Southampton. We saw it again against Coventry. And we did have some nearly moments, but my overriding feeling leaving that game was get some players in, get Danny some players because we've got the, we've got, he's got the style, he's got the, the, the ethos of, of, of what we want from the players and everything. And, it's just we haven't got the quality, have we? Oh, there's always this? one, John, in there. There's always one. John Beckett, we could do with that lad yeah. at Ipswich. What's his name? You know, I think they call him Luongo. Don't. It's just that, that he was <laughs> one of my players. He was it's a sore players. point. It's a sore yeah, point. If I'm if I if I'm one of Palmer's, if Palmer's one of my boys, Luongo <laughs> was uh, Ashes. <laughs> he's got po he's got posters. He's got po behind that thing there that's on his TV on on, on the screen now is yeah. a big poster of Luongo in his pants. <laughs> 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 wow! Now you've said it, there is some the clever girl. there is some clever follows we have. So I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> gonna be and no doubt Dan because he'll, he'll, he'll put a picture <laughs> Luongo um, in his pants but, hugging uh, Ash. We, yeah, we, we've talked about obviously we, we've gone to the second half. We've conceded again. Um, and obviously, we've, we've just spoke 10 minutes about having a go at uh, some of the players that didn't perform. Um, for me, I think Beadle makes a class save before the mm -hmm. goal. Absolute class save. He's, come, he's, he's hit it through the bodies. He's popped up. He's saved with his hand. And obviously, he's dropped down for um, Sheaf again, who, who mm -hmm. basically just lashes it home. Uh, and then from, from them, guys, what do you think? 2-0, it's a big ask, isn't it? It's a big ask. Um, yeah. yeah. John, was, what um, were your thoughts when, when the second went in 
on 57. Yeah. So there's still plenty of time left in the game. Um, yeah, 57, like you say, came in um, very instinctive save from Beadle. But unfortunately, you know, you never know when you've got to just, you know, do a snap one-handed reactive save where, where that ball is going to fall. And unfortunately, it, it, it fell to to to, their, uh, to to sheath again and he was he was in there for his second um there were a bit of slack defending initially before that goal but it floated over to the back stick and it didn't seem like there was anybody no, there and they, were, and they were just allowed to sort of control it and then and then put a dangerous ball into the into the box which uh, which then resulted in the shot from initially from their player but yeah for fantastic reflex say from from uh from our from our beetle there but uh yeah, just unlucky that it got it fell to uh, a player who uh, was able that she either was able to she was able to put it straight back in the net there and at two 0 and I think we're all thinking because of his goal scoring woes that that's probably that's probably it, isn't it? Despite the being, you know, still 30, 30 minutes plus stoppage time, but you know, um, initially, like I said, I thought it was a good save, un, un, unlucky to rebound, but you the. That uh, Sheev's a good player and he knows where to be in the right place at the right time, didn't he? And uh, he was a key player for them all afternoon, wasn't he? It, I, I think the thing from me, sorry guys, is that we went 2 0 down and with, um, I think within five minutes, I think uh, Rule made four subs come on. Um, was it Ugbo to make his uh, debut for the club? Um, for Maywo, Kadamachi and Masaba all came on on 61, 62 mm -hmm. minutes. Which is chasing the game then, and it's it's good. Um, it's 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 good that you've got a manager who's going to make those decisions and, and make it straight away. We've had it before, haven't we, with other managers that seem to be a bit scared of making these tactical changes. Um, Stevie, what do you think? Obviously, two 0 down. <clears throat> got to get a goal as quick as possible, which we did eventually through Windass. Yeah, um, testament to to Danny Rule. Um, I think he's he's working with what he's got, um, and I was I was happy to see that it wasn't a panic sort of situation. It was it, it felt to me like it was I'm pissed off. Um, what what's on the pitch at the moment ain't working. I'm going to make four subs, and I I can't re recollect a time. And I know we're in a five sub era now, or whatever it is. I can't recollect a time where a manager's made four subs at one point, um, and that goes to show that he's he's not formulaic. And his predecessor, as, oh sorry, the predecessor before the predecessor last season was much maligned for his very, um, he'd, he'd met the same subs at the same time sort of thing. And people would talk about his tactical uh, lack of prowess, if you like. It shows me that, you know, we've got a manager here that if he doesn't like what's happening, he's, he's going to call upon the people that he's got. So fair play to him. Um, obviously, you know, the, the, the outcome, and I said earlier on, the, the second half of, of the game, I think stats wise I'll stand correct. I think we were better second half than we were first half. Oh. Um, you know, and if you look at the, the the game overall in terms of the stats, I've got them written down. Um they only had one more shot on target than we did over ninety minutes. And we're talking about a team that was simply better than us. They they, they you know, they might have had ten percent more of possession um, and a few more shots. But you know, when you're talking about oh, there you go. When you're talking about the on target sort of stuff. Um, there wasn't a million miles between the two teams in terms of the stats, and I think that's yeah. as, as as disappointing as Saturday felt. And you know, you hold your hands up. You know, our season's not going to be defined by losing to Coventry. It's not going to be defined by dipping away four 0 at Southampton. If we go down, it's going to be defined against you know by the poor results against teams like Preston when we could have won at home or um, the Huddersfield ball draw, and you know those sorts of games. Um, losing at West Brom where they scored after 15 minutes and then we had to stand there and spend 75 minutes just going what the fuck are we going to do now what time are we going to get in you know um, it's it, it's not been great this season um, but yeah Saturday in terms of the subs fine no problem uh, please uh, he's, he's, he's tried to mix it up a little bit yeah yeah we I mean it, it was it was a goal by Windows. it wasn't a great goal it was a goal we needed he took his chance um, but after that, after the 68th minute, I don't think we created that much, really. It wasn't any, it wasn't any, you know, backs to the wall from Coventry that I felt that we were really giving them under cost. I think we had one effort. Um, I don't think uh, Kadamatri didn't really. I think it was, um, was it? <clears throat> I think Ugbo had an effort, I think, and, and that was it. 
Oh, people, people, right. the, the nature of these sorts of shows tonight, people would want us to, for me personally, would, would say, right, what did you think of Ugbo's performance? And it was very much flash in the pan. Uh, yeah. He came on, he ran, um, he showed a lot of sort of endeavour. Um, I thought he, I thought he ran. I'd, I'd question how much he actually. Well, here you go. And this is, yeah. as I said, it's it's the nature of where we are. Uh, Mike Poulton, uh, Ugbo was a huge boost that second half when he came on, came back to defend, tried to create something up front, uh, was not too close to scoring at one point, and looks like a handful. I'm, I, I can't disagree with that. I think it was it, it's difficult when you're playing against that that sort of ilk of team. Um, I don't necessarily think he had a massive impact on the game in terms of he looked like the guy that's going to change it, equalise yeah. him, you know, there. I think there's more to come, I do. But, it, um, but it, it, it was good for someone to come off the bench and have the energy to roll and, and put himself back because we've, we've had Kadamatri up front and then we've brought Fletcher on, who he does put himself about a bit, but I just thought that... Ugba, I, I did think, but it's hard. He came on for, what was it, 28 minutes. You know, I want to see more of him, obviously. He'll probably start on Friday, no doubt, maybe. Um, but there we are. Um, I, I mean, a 2-1 loss against playoff, well, playoffs final. They will finish season. playoffs. They yeah. will finish playoffs minimum. Yeah, playoffs, and then they're, they're well in the hunt this season. So I don't think a 2-1 loss at home i know it's not the result we needed um, and we're gonna say and no doubt we'll say that more than once this season but i think 2-1 commentary <clears throat> over twenty-eight thousand at hillsborough as well which is like we said earlier fair crack from commentary fans um but that's it in it commentary done dust oh no it's not oh no we've got him <laughs> again haven't we oh no we thought we got the back of him um so the next thing i was going to bring this up it's on the agenda anyway but um I think he's our new favourite subscriber, old Glenn. <laughs> How much did the pit? I was going to say this. Um, I noticed it. A lot of people around me uh, noticed it. The 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 state of the pitch, for whatever reason, and I don't, we, we haven't played on it. Do you know what I mean? The break. We have, we have though, and we've trained on it. Danny Rule, Danny Rule, uh, the Sheffield Star put an article out today. Oh, right. So, and and because of the. The frosty conditions, Middlewood Road hasn't got any undersoil heating. Um, the, they don't like training artificial grass, so they weren't playing under the dome. Oh, um, no, so, and then also, I think the under 18s or under 21s have played a <clears> cup <throat> game on it as well. And and Danny Rule did actually stay, I think it was tongue in cheek, that um, it could be used as a bit of an, they thought it might be used as a bit of an advantage against Coventry in regards to the state of the pitch because we'd played and trained on it all week. They, but it certainly, certainly looked like it'd been trained on for quite a few days over what was a pretty shitty weather period, wasn't it? Co Coventry played on the uh, CBS arena when Wasps had been on there. Have you seen the state of pitch it was? They couldn't play, <laughs> they were used to it. <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, John, I mean, it doesn't help, does it? All right, the excuses are there, but it's the same for both teams. But we're a championship team. Come on, yeah, we've is, relayed yeah, this pitch yeah. God knows how many times. It's an odd <laughs> one, isn't it, with the, with the pitch? Because, you know, when when, when Chan Siri, you know, first came along, one of, one of the things he did was get the de Deso pitch installed, wasn't it? I mean, I don't even know if that's still a thing anymore or... Um, We've probably had a couple of groundsmen in between that that time as well. Uh, it, you know, it probably didn't help that we have an under fives match in the bottom corner every every half time. I don't know what all that's about, but you know, not not to be a killjoy, I hope. But sometimes you want your pitch to be pristine condition for the for the full season. You've you, you've got to take measures, haven't you? I mean, we, I've seen the lamps as well, the heat lamps that they've had in the car park, but I, I can't recall seeing them on for a, a good while. So. I don't know if it's just a bit of um, it, the pitch needs a bit of TLC and it's not getting it, or if it's genuinely um, to do with. I know, I know there's been issues when they built the grandstand that it it stopped a bit of sun sunlight getting on the pitch at times as well. But then again, in summertime, surely that's not a that's not a factor. But obviously, you need your playing pitch before that. So yeah, it can be a bit of a leveler. But in this in this day and age, I wouldn't say it's a it's a it's a massive deal i think the pitch i don't think the pitch was that bad it was a bit patchy in places but like you said uh actually if uh they're coming from their arena where they where they let rugby teams play on 
on the pitch, then um, I wouldn't have thought it's going to be much of an, an issue for them. Yeah. It was a while ago, I think. Uh, they, yeah, yeah, they don't play. play. Whilst don't, whilst yeah. don't play on there anymore. Um, don't right, play so no. uh, I don't follow rugby. So <laughs> obviously, um, we can't do a show in January without talking about January transfer window. 22 days in from opening, <laughs> we've signed two players, Beadle and Ugbo, a goalkeeper and obviously a forward. I want to just hear what you guys think on why. Why only two players when a lot of um, a lot of supporters said five, six players. I think Roll himself said he wanted to bring four or five in. It, it, it's easy, isn't it? On, on Football Manager, you just say, do you want to come? Yes. Press, agree. It comes next day. That's it. How hard is it? Steve, go on. Your face doesn't, doesn't, doesn't say that. Um... I'm I'm a little bit worried, if I'm honest. Um, I'd expected more, and I think the the majority of fans were sort of saying October November time. All we need to do is be in touch. We've said it, you know. We we've said if we're in touch. Oh, hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if, if if we're in touch, if 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 we've been in touch um, within sort of Christmas time, we get to the transfer window. And we can do a little bit of business, then um, we'll leave Danny Rule to, to to make the choices that he's going to make in terms of the squad up, up overhaul and upheaval. And the second half of the season will be when he finds his groove and he gets his sort of metal and he, he's he's there to, to to sort of put his actual stamp on on things. Um, it's not happening at the moment, is it? And it feels to me like I think he's coming with a plan. And I'll say this, he's coming with a plan because he's clearly decided that there are certain players in our, our group that aren't for him. And without naming names, we know that there are players that have been held in high regard uh, this season, earlier and last season, that aren't getting a look in and won't get a look in. And there are people that have been basically frozen out. Um, and I think the, the, the feel is that some of those people have been told that they're free to go. That's fine. Um, we've sent some people back, obviously, be... Uh, Buckley's gone back because of injury. I'd question whether or not he would have stayed anyway. Um, Davis has gone back. And there are certain other players that aren't going to be used. And I think he's got it in his mind that he would have brought in three, four, five other uh, players. Um, my, 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 my one hope is that um, we're in a situation where we've still got a little bit of time. And I'd wonder whether or not he's got certain targets that are in the wings and will come to fruition once bigger teams and teams above us and around us um, have done their business. Um, so hopefully, maybe, potentially, we'll get to a situation where, you know, once a, a certain teams have, have, have got their, their business over the line, we can start to look at that triple down effect. And I've totally been thrown by these two idiots. <laughs> it's all right, mate. It's all right. Um, <laughs> Hence, we're looking that way for the last five minutes. <laughs> Simon, are you are you worried? Um, I, I'm assuming yes, because of the lack of activity. And where do you feel the problem is? I, th I think for me, it was the fact that I said from the start, if we're going to do our business, we need to start doing it early January, not latter part of January, because we need the points. Um, I don't know. I just my worry is the fact that we've taken on a recruitment director. And, then, and I always sort of based it on the fact that we've taken this guy on who's probably being paid a considerable amount of money to do a job in regards to bringing players in. And I'm not seeing him earn his money at the moment. But then again, we like, like Steve alluded to, we don't know what's going on in the background. We don't know, you know, there's been numerous uh, names linked with us over the last couple of weeks, but none of which have sort of set me alight in regards to the quality of the players. You know, a guy playing in... Was he playing for Motherwell? Yeah. You know, and and you know, yeah, the, these yeah. Yeah, he has, no he disrespect has to Motherwell. You know, it, it, Scottish league is uh, as like my Scottish accents, not particularly that great. So, yeah, he's um, gone to Sturm Graz, who are looking at Champions League place, the second in Austria, aren't they? How's he gone? He, yeah, right. yeah, that's, that's yeah. But again, the, that, the, the, the Austrian, Austrian league, the you know, know looking at know. Champions League place, know. you know, it, it sources, you know, it, it's it sources for courses and stuff like that. Um, 
I, I think we're also I think we're also caught between a rock and a hard place in regards to if if we haven't got a huge amount of money, then we need to offload players because you've got to look at Smith, uh, Gregory. Um, well, I don't know how much we're paying for Hendricks. You know the the loan players, Fletcher. Have you got to have these got to go before other players to free up money before these players come in? You know, the Newcastle was saying they, they wouldn't take back Hendricks unless he got another team to go to or we paid his wages till the end of the season. You know, these, these sort of things, you know, the club isn't awash with money. We know that. Um, and there's a lot of clubs in the same position as us who aren't awash with money in this league and the leagues below us. Um, but the main question mark is we brought a recruitment guy in. So yeah. sure, surely enough, taking this guy on, he isn't sitting at home twiddling his thumbs. So he's that's, would, that's I, my worry. You know, what, what the hell's going I, on in the background? I I we've said this for the longest time as well, since Rule has come in. What what is happening here? We brought in Danny Rule, we brought in Chris Powell, we brought in Pedersen, we paid. To bring in Pedersen, yeah. we brought yeah. in Bibbo, we brought yeah. in Lenzer, um, we, we brought in all of these players that sorry, these coaches off the field and these mm -hmm. the, the, this team around our manager who is an absolute how we've managed to do that in the first place is, is unreal. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just in terms of the targets, and I, I, I don't necessarily worry about the Connor Coventries of this world because I think mm -hmm. if he's decided to go against us. As, as, as Simon, I think, was just alluding to, if, he, if he's not coming to us and then has decided he's going to go to Charlton, Charlton then 10th, I think, in, in, in mm. League One. Just um, and then, yeah. Yeah. But they aren't they aren't 10th with a, a view to getting anywhere near the playoffs. I, mm. I, I looked at this the other day. Mm. They're, they're miles off it. So they can bring in whoever they want. The best they can hope for is top eight. I don't see them getting into the champion, sorry, into the, the, uh, into the playoffs in, the, in League One. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I've got I've no dog in that fight. But um from that recruitment point of view, have they not got to a point now where they must have got to a point now where they've said before January we know what we're dealing with. Is Chance here relying to um Kevin Beadle? It's Kevin Beadle, isn't it? Is is, is Chance here relying to him? Has yeah. he lied to Danny Rule? Is he lying to these people and now saying, Right, we I've told you that you can have this, but it turns out that when push comes to shove. I'm not going to let Lee Gregory go. I'm not going to let Michael Smith move on. I'm not going to sell Marvin Johnson for a million. And these are all the rumours and everything else that we're, we're, we're talking about. Um, if he's too profligate to, to, to let go and he's too tight and he's he's going to keep all of these people because he, he doesn't want to lose face, then we've got a problem. We've got a huge problem because we've got to make some movements with people that are saleable assets. The Hendrick one, fine. If, if we don't want to get rid of Hendrick and we can't get rid of Hendrick... It's a 24-man squad and he'll sit over there and that's absolutely fine. And if we need him, we, we, we get him in. But people want Lee Gregory and we aren't yeah. going to play Lee Gregory. People want Michael Smith. We aren't going to play Michael Smith. He's playing yeah. hardball with uh, Marvin Johnson. So, you know, I, I keep Johnson, by the way. I, I, I think at this stage, unless we could bring somebody in who's going to be proven to be an adequate replacement, which you aren't going to do in 10 days, regardless of what happens in the summer, you've got to keep him because he's been one of our top three players in the last month and going into the second half of the season I don't think it's replaceable. I agree entirely with, with the guys who we sit, sit with you know we said you know would you have would you have sold Johnson for a million pound and I think everybody bar me said yes and I went no and then when he put the ball in which resulted in a scoring I went that's why you don't sell him you know and you're absolutely right Steve he, he has been our best player since he came back uh, after he was ostracised by Cisco you don't you don't they're the players you don't get rid of but but lee gregory love the bloke to bits absolutely fantastic top professional you know if somebody wants him let him go if somebody wants smith let him go yeah. you know let's free some wages up even if it's half the wages to to pay for somebody else you know and and, and this, this is the thing and, and like you said you know We've assembled what's almost, you know, a team of coaches that wouldn't look out of place in the Premiership. So, you know, they have their wants. If that then goes to our chairman and he's putting, a, you know, a fence up to say no, then what? Where does the club go from there? The the only other thing I'd say there as well is from from a loan 
perspective, you know, we, we, we've now got this manager who's being caught. He will end up being courted if he doesn't move on because he's not happy. Um, his, his reputation's growing. The, the way that we're playing football, you know, on a Saturday, you get, you get the bet apps and the bet uh, handles that will go tick, 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 wins, blah, blah, bet 365, check a Wednesday on a rule and all of this. We're in that sort of boat now. People should, should be wanting to send their good players to get experience of working with a very good coaching setup. You know, um, Chris Powell has come with a very high reputation. You know, these people are coming with CVs. Why, if, I, if I'm a Premier League upper mid-table team that's got a, a, an 18, 19-year-old player, I want to send him to go and work with Danny Rule because Danny Rule has worked with Neuer. He's worked with Lewandowski. He's worked with, uh, you know, Muller. He's Ashley worked with Fletcher. these and now he's working with Ashley Fletcher <laughs> and Jeff Hendry <laughs> and Bodhi Arby. With due respect to these players, you know, there's levels to it. But if I want to send a lad out for six months and go, right, go work with this coaching setup because that's what they want to do, then send them out and, let, you know, let's go and see if we can get a, a striker to go and get, you know, eight, ten goals in 15 games or whatever it may be. I don't know. Well, well, just sorry, John. I was going to come to you, but go on, John. Then, then I'll come to you with a question. Go on. Yeah, I was just going to say what. Surely, one of the things about getting Danny Rule was that we were going to back him in the transfer window when January rolled round. Because obviously, we're on. It was a tough task anyway, taking on this challenge, seeing where we were in the league at the bottom there, without without a win, uh, horrendous start, really, worst in club history. So then you're bringing in Danny Rule, and Rule's going to know that he can only do so much, but basically in his mind, he would be trying to get as much as he could out of his squad and then add to it in this January window. And part of that part of that process would have involved getting this head of recruitment in. If you're getting this head of recruitment in, was, again, to, like alluding to what Steve said about CVs, worked at Man United, this, that and the other. So you're thinking, yeah, we know traditionally that it's hard to get players in in the January window. It usually takes place at the end of the window because clubs finalise the squads, they want to know what they've got before they let other players out. But you think with somebody like him, you're getting in because he might just be able to speed that process along a little bit and get and get players in a little bit in, you know, to, to support Danny a little bit quicker. Um and my worry now is that, you know, for as as battling as we are, we need help. And the games are running out, aren't they? Well, let's be right. Yeah. We are mid January now. We've got we, I know there's plenty of games left to do it. But in it, there's also a bit of panic, not panic, there's also a little bit of concern for me setting in there that we, we're not moving quick enough to get these players in to support Danny. And, that you know, we might just run out of games, which would be an absolute crying shame. So I think whatever is going on, if there's anything going on, it, it needs to speed up because don't bring a painter in and don't give him a canvas. Do you know what I mean? Back him. Get him. Get get some players in for him and, and, and you know, trust in him and you believe in him then back him and get some players and we need players we need help yeah. otherwise we're not going to do it uh, uh, yeah because obviously he's come from a red bull background you know chan is doing a red bull squad on panda pop wages isn't it yeah you know, it's it's, it's going to come and that, the question i was going to ask you john because i don't know if Glenn, our new favorite um subscriber it he might have seen some stuff on on the internet earlier um there's no chance he's got to be back if you don't get back, uh, Glenn, what Glenn's asked everyone is any chance of Rule leaving as he's not been back seemingly by the chairman? Oh, come on, there's always Maybe. footballing. You yeah. can never know if, if the manager's going to be here. We've seen it with uh, Birmingham sacking their manager, fixing the league, and then replacing him with the English Cisco. Sorry, Rune. Really. Um, <laughs> there's every chance in there. But. He's got to stay. My 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 gut feeling is that for all his disappointment, if there is any disappointment and frustration, as the rumours on our socials and within sort of Twitter land at the minute are, um, I think even if he doesn't get back this month, I think he sees the season out. I think he'll he'll he'll, he'll get to. I, th I think he's felt the love from the fans. And I think he'll go, right, I'll do whatever I can for the rest of the season. Um, because the bigger picture is the plan. And we've said this in an ideal world. What we do is we, we, we stay up, 
we move players on, we, we rebuild in the summer and we get to, you know, we, we, we get to the end of the season, a championship team, and then we look to build so we can push on and do, you know, something special next year in terms of pushing towards playoffs, if not higher. Um, that was our utopia. That was our dream. And at the minute, it's, it seems, let's be right, that we're a way off that. So for me personally, I'd be, I think Rule is probably going to go if if he's not going to get backed, if he's not going to get backed and things are happening. And I'm not saying that they are because I ain't got a clue. Um, is he going to get to the end of the season or, or, or find out, sorry, the end of the transfer window, realise that he's got this till the end of the season and then try and build a reputation of keeping this rag ass set of lads up and if we can finish 21st, that's his that's his CV. Bang, I've kept him with this and then I'm going to go and I'm going to kick on. Um, and with somebody else, by the way. Um, because I don't think he's going to stick around next season and have the same sort of situation that we are at the moment. I think, I think Danny Rule, it, it, I mean, I don't know the guy, but the impression I get from his interviews, etc. is, you know, he, he's a guy who's come in who's never managed before. I think he, he he's a little person who has seen what he can, has done over a short period of time and whether he gets back to or not, exactly as you say, Steve, will stay to the end of the season. It's, you know, his stock has gone up, but his stock will go up even further if A, he keeps us up, or B, we just miss out on staying up. To walk out of a team, I don't know how many matches he's managed now, but to walk out of us honours now isn't really going to do his stock any good in a way i think i think he's not been in it long enough to you know he'll he'll find it find a job it probably in germany but i think he's the sort of man who would look at it and go no i'm staying here until at least the end of the season um and do what i possibly can to keep his club up because i think he's invested in us and the fan base as well so do I, Simon, but I also think you can only prop us up, you can only prop us up for so long. Give the man some help, you know what I mean? It's like uh, he's, uh, John, he's firefighting I'm, for all season. I, I, I'm, I'm, I agree entirely, and, and we've all yeah. said it since he came in, that he needs a couple of players. If anything, we desperately need a decent striker. Um, I agree absolutely 100% with you. Um, but I also think that he... I, I and I hope in my heart that he wouldn't walk, that he would stay and do what he can with what he's got. Yes, he does need it. We've known that. We've known that since bloody August, haven't we? That we've needed players and we've yeah, not. Last year. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah. Well, look, we were having the same conversation, weren't we, in um, this time last year in regards to our transfer window of Aidan Flint. Yeah. You now we, we brought Aidan Flint in, and, and that was it. And. And it did and Ipswich, show. Ipswich brought Broadhead in, didn't they? Yeah, it, and, it, it, just totally yeah. and we had that. Them. We had that slight wobble, didn't we? And we were like, "Fuck's sake!" Because players were out injured, and we didn't have any cover, and this, that, and the other. We brought players in this time, but he's been saddled with the Hendricks and 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 these players because they were not none of his players, were they? Um, well, look, it's out of our hands. We can talk to it till the cows come home. Um, I, you know, he's done a fantastic job with what he's got. I hope he gets what he wants, and we'll go from there. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I agree, Simon, with what you just said. I, I can't disagree. It's his thing, but we, 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 it's going to be interesting next couple of weeks, and we will no doubt cover it again in next week's show and probably the week after. And even after January finishes, we'll be going, we'll be moaning who we haven't signed or whatever. So. Move on. So up next, um, I don't know if you've seen him play before. Uh, t team from the Midlands called Coventry City are coming to Sheffield. They haven't been for ages. Rubbish they are. For ages, they? They're rubbish yeah. they are. So uh, it's the FA Cup. We'll, we'll call that. I mean, it's a Friday night. It's been moved because of the other half of the Sheffield are playing on the Saturday. Um, what, what's your thoughts? Are you that bothered? Uh, just a quick one because, look, we're on overtime here, lads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Coventry City's next cup final. Listen, <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've, I'm fed up of blowing smoke up Coventry fans' arses. Yeah, uh, yeah. We can go in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, yeah. Friday night, obviously. Next round of cup. What, what are your thoughts, guys? Um, are you bothered? Are we playing the kids? Um, 
I ain't bothered, mate. I, I'm not that bothered at all. I don't think it matters whether you're bothered or not. Um, if I'm well, honest with you, I say? I'm in charge when fully, not you. I just Danny Rule isn't going to chuck the kids in. I don't think he is. I don't think that's what he, what he's about. I think he manages players, squad, everybody else. You might see Shipston. You might see. Um, I think Ugbo is going to start. Um, Dan Fudge, super fan Dan Fudge. Uh, give Byers and Rhys James a, a, a run out. I'm not against that. Um, you know, we'll 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 play players that have been in and around the setup. But I don't see him going right. He's not going to get involved. He's not going to get involved. He's not going to get involved. Um, I think he's going to play at least four or five lads that played on Saturday. I think he will um, because I don't think there's anybody else to bring in. Uh, Momo will probably play. Momo and Byers in the middle of the park. He'll probably sit banning out. Um, <laughs> He may very well play um, Palmer again in the middle. Ugbo up top. Masaba's probably going to play. You, you might sit Windass out. Um, but, yeah, do you know what? I am bothered because I don't want to see us lose three times to one team in the space of a month. I don't. Um, and I know it's only the FA Cup, but that's a, an absolute kick in the neck because I don't care how good commentary we're on, on, on Saturday. I want to beat commentary because they beat us on Saturday. So I was, John, do you, think, thought, um, do you echo those thoughts of Stevie? Uh, yeah, I understand. I understand the point of view. It's, I mean, it's, it's, the FA Cup these days is a bit like community service, isn't it? Nobody wants to do it, but you, inevitably you've got to, haven't you? But um, I think playing playing aside again, we've had it with Cardiff previously, haven't we? I've had to play them in the league, and then you draw Fleetwood them in the cup again. Season. And it's Fleetwood last season, oh. and um, you know, years years ago when FA Cup still meant something, it, we would would have probably put a lot more focus on the FA Cup side and, and well, as, uh, certainly as much focus as, as the league side, but we all know that's, you know, yesteryear and things have changed now, haven't they? So, um, I, I agree. I don't think we'll put a weekend side out. It doesn't seem to be his moxie at all, that. So, I think we will put, there'll be some changes, but I won't necessarily say it'll be a weaker side. As fans, I don't think we're too bothered about um, the, the, the Cup. We obviously prioritise the league but um it would be nice to to, to put a, a relatively strong side out but why and, why and why do we why do we it. say this why do we say this what, i'm sorry for, the for, for jumping in yeah no but people say we're not bothered about the cup the cup bring it's a it's a revenue stream mm. how much money if we win on Saturday, value, if we went on we're not going to win the fa cup but if we if we win on Friday, how much money is that going to bring in? And we're arguing about whether or not we can afford to bring a loan player in. Yeah. yeah Potentially, well, that, this this money, this that this money won't, go the, won't go to transfers, will it? But it's money over the line. It's money. It's money within the club. I'm not suggesting for a second we win on Friday and all of a sudden we're going to get a 20 goal <laughs> season striker. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that we're managing and we're pulling bits in here and there. And every penny, literally every penny counts. We're talking about if we can get a decent sponsorship deal in, that's going to have a, a, a really positive impact on the club. This is, a, a in, in relative terms, it's the equivalent of a sponsorship deal. There is a financial gain there. Like I say, it's about, you know, 100 to 200,000 pounds roughly, isn't it, on estimate, uh, which is, uh, you know, not to be scoffed at. I just think in terms of yeah, where well, Wednesday one fans look at the priorities, they won't be looking at the cup as much. But yeah, financially, I agree, Stevie. But we we just we just said about fifteen minutes ago about letting a player go for a million quid. So if we play a half decent team on Friday, and just for instance, who's who's been playing fantastic? Uh, Windass, just a Windass out for the rest of the season, or or a couple of players pick up knocks or get a red card. That may impact in that cell because of the FA Cup. So I'd rather stay in the league and focus on that and not have hundred grand. But we're going to that if buts and maybes, aren't we? Like we said earlier on, like Steve Steve alluded, like Steve, like, like Steve alluded to, if if Bannon had stayed on his feet and not slid in, yeah. maybe the guy wouldn't have scored. You know, I, 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 if yeah, Palmer could I, play I, midfield, I'm, I'm, then. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa! Yeah. We're in overtime. Yeah. Leave, no, leave no, my Liam alone. Gonna be a, the, the WhatsApp tonight is going to be awful. <laughs> I, I, I was completely one hundred percent not going Friday, 
And I text Steve this afternoon and went, where are you sitting Friday, mate, so we can get tickets together? Because I've got I, FOMO. I, I, I've got FOMO. And, and, and then there is that little bit. And you tell you where it stems back to was sitting in the bar in end of April, start of May, and we would Friday night and we'd just watch Wednesday lose 4-0 to Peterborough. And for a fleeting moment, I really went, I'm not going on Thursday. And I went. And you would on have been Thursday. sacked from this podcast. Simon. Yeah, and my mate Ad, who you all know, you all yeah. know Ad, he didn't go, right? Oh, it's so he mate. he didn't go, and he's been going to Wednesday with a season ticket for years and years and years. Look, we'll play them. If we beat them, we beat them. If we don't, we don't. It's cash in the bank, whether we beat them or don't beat them. I believe they're bringing. I'm sure our Sky Blue follower. Will tell us how many they're bringing on Friday, well, but I believe sold out bringing, again. I think they sold out again. Nine, bear in mind, so bear in mind, they will probably run Hillsborough on Friday night because I don't think we'll take a big crowd. Uh, I think we're only open. not enough people serving behind bar. They couldn't. I think we're only. I think we're only open the north stand and the south stand lower. So it, it's uh, there's, the cop isn't open again. So look, I'll be going. You know, it's the hope that kills you. Um, oh, the copies. Yeah, I'm going to rethink cop open, Mr. Oh, I James. Know, I, I don't know if it means get the cop open or the oh, okay. opening I is going to go. Sure. But anyway, uh, we'll go. We'll enjoy it. Hopefully, it'll be better than Fleetwood away last season, eh? Yeah. Ash? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Dan's uh, the Guinness is pretty strong in that Irish bar. He's put Windass Link with Inter Miami. Imagine him playing alongside oh, right. an essay. Wow. Yeah. So, um, guys, any other business? So, we'll, we'll. Oh no, sorry. I'll just. Sorry, missed out. Um, just a quick prediction then for Friday night in the cup. Simon. One nil Wednesday. Stevie. Two one Wednesday. John. <laughs> God, John. What did you say? Two nil commentary. Two nil commentary. Two nil commentary. Uh... Fuck off, John. <laughs> Does it go to replays? Does it go to replays this time round, or is it pens? Does it go to replays? <laughs> Better not. So does it go oh. one all and we have to go to the go to uh... I think we have to watch an episode of a Holmes under the hammer with Dion Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. Or we have to do I community love service. I love that program. <laughs> uh, guys, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go for a I'm gonna go for a one nil commentary win. I'm gonna go with John. So that's two against two. Apologies, guys. <laughs> And everyone watching. Um, any other business from anyone? Um, oh, I've got one. Come on, Steve, you got some? Yeah, just a. Um, I'm going to try and word this the right way. Just a huge. Um, yesterday, um, about four o'clock, we put out a tweet, um, and in that tweet, we were thanking people um, for the incredible generosity that they'd shown already. Uh, for the, those people that don't know. Um, starting on February the 25th and for the next three home games after that. Um, we're doing a bit of a community initiative charity collection of Easter eggs. Um, so it starts on Bristol City on the 25th. Um, I've stolen Ashes Thunder and I don't know what the other two games are, but there's one in the week after that. Is it the 4th and 11th of March? I can't remember, but we've, we've, we've got game, games. Plymouth and yeah. Leeds. Yeah. Plymouth and Leeds, thank you. Um, already, and we are on the 22nd of January. We've had a ridiculous amount of Easter egg donations, commitments, intent, and a fair whack of money that has been transferred across so that we can get an incredible um, initiative off the ground. Uh, I've said it time and again. We say it time and again. We are not for profit. You know, we aren't a, 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 a podcast that looks to make money off our fan base and we are not a, a podcast that is looking to do anything for personal gain. What we do is we love a bit of banter, um, we, 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 you know, amongst ourselves and we'd like to think that people engage with what we do. Um, but at the end of the day, we understand and we've said this all season, it's a, it's a horrible time. Um, sort of socially and in terms of financial climate, it's a horrible time to be a football fan. Um, and we totally appreciate how privileged and fortunate we are to be supporters that are able to go to games. And I know that there are, there are sometimes people that can't do that. And there are sometimes people that can't afford a shirt, can't afford to, um, you know, 
access things within our game that uh, other people can. So if we can give something back, that's absolutely fantastic. And that's where we get our buzz. Um, so keep your eye on our socials. Um, Ash tweeted something out yesterday uh, with a little message and a graphic. It's gone on the um, all our social platforms. Keep watching. We'll, we'll, we'll keep updating you in terms of what we're doing. But if you have a quid, 50p, whatever it is, to donate a, an egg, it doesn't matter what that egg is. It's not coming to us. Um, believe it or not, looking at our physiques, it's going to um, <laughs> it's going it's going to people that are deserving, and you know, going we're, 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 they're, they're yeah. going through it for one reason or another. These are going to charity; they're going through it, and you know, those charities will hopefully receive them really well. Um, and I think it will grow. I think there's going to be a couple of bits that are beyond the Easter eggs uh, that we're trying to do for those people that can't necessarily access that. Um, please, please, please give whatever you can and support. It isn't coming to us. It's going to our Sheffield Wednesday fan base, our Sheffield Wednesday community, and it would mean the world to us if we can make a difference to um, to those people that are a little less fortunate than us. Thank you very much for that, Stevie. And just to add on that, every donation, whether it's an Easter egg or if you can't get to the game that you can give a quid or two, whatever, will be put into a draw to win a shirt home or away. Um, so please do. Uh, we're going to be there. I ain't got the timings yet, but we'll be there well well before the game. So just come and say hello. Um Donate an egg if you can. There's no pressure at all. We understand it's a hard time for everyone. So please do and thank you very much. Um, and I think um, I'm going to leave the last word to Finn. I think you'll stay up. Prob Nick will win on Friday as well. And I'm thinking uh, he's obviously a commentary fan. So thanks for that, Finn. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. This is the Wednesday week. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, the boring bit. Like, click, subscribe, what all the YouTubers do. Um, and have a good good evening and we'll uh, we'll speak to you again.